Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the new episode of the Full Funnel B2B Marketing Podcast. This is your host, Andrew Zinkevich, and my guest is Zina Playachi. She is running two companies. She's running Race the Runway, and she's co founder at Fitch Slab. And she is one of my favorite marketers when it comes to customer interviews. I don't know that many people who are regularly talking about the importance of customer interviews. And the most important thing here is that I don't know that much people that uh, actually provide actionable insights and processes how to run the customer interviews. So today we are going to dive deeply into the art of customer interviews, how to leverage them to improve your marketing message, to identify the dark funnel, to find the insights uh, about what influences the decision-making process at your target accounts. And um, Zinep has prepared some actionable worksheets for you. So you'll come up uh, after this session, you'll have Lots of actionable and practical advice that you can work on. Zinat, welcome. Thank you so much, Andre. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I can't. This is a great conversation. As you know, I do a lot of talking about this, and, and I do a lot of doing in in this sense. So I'm very very happy um, to be here, share with you um, the the why, the how, um, the when, and and also the the actionable worksheets that, that uh, Andre just mentioned and happy to take your questions, of course. So let's kick off our podcast with a statement you have on your LinkedIn profile. So you say that taking time to talk to prospects and customers does not have an apparent ROI. The pressure to generate sales is real. Time seems to be working against you, but you are basically wasting dollars. You are basically wasting marketing budget if you are not running customer interviews. So please share why. Andre, you really went, uh, you, you dug deep with this one. <laughs> Amazing. So, um, which, which is also applied to uh, what I believe, which is guessing is the number one runway killer. Okay, so when you and I look at I look at customers as as assets. I know they're people, but they're assets. So you've uh, they've cost you uh, dollars. Let's say forty bucks to acquire uh, a customer, or you know a thousand, whatever it is. And what do you get out of that? You you get uh, in terms of ROI, you get them staying longer with you. Okay, so they can you know put more uh, revenue in your uh, in the bank. They can refer someone to you. That's, that's always uh, that they can, they can spend more within the same period of time, right? So you can upsell them or cross sell them, but there's, you know, by not taking advantage of, of the, the, the buyer knowledge, you're basically leaving money on the table and you're not extracting as much information from, uh, from your, your assets, so to speak. Okay. These are people that have believed somehow trusted that you can help them solve their problem or solve their problem in a, in a better way. So they've actually put their hands in their pockets and they've paid for your service. So that's the type of knowledge that we should, we should be gathering, okay? Because surveys, so there, there are two things that uh, companies, founders, marketers generally do. Two things, one is go look outside for you know anyone that has any quick hacks um, or any advice, but the the thing is that hacks and advice you have to you have to really know the context, okay? And generally, these hacks and these contexts you know they, they look great in a video, great on paper, but if you don't have the context, it's probably not going to work for you. So that's one. Then when they look inside the company, they just um, binge on on analytics, on listening to sales calls, on reading uh, reviews, uh, NPS, all that. I'm not saying that that information is not good. Yes, it is good, but it's not enough. It's siloed and it only tells you the what. It doesn't tell you the, the why, right? And when I mean the why is, why did they buy from us? What did they, you know? 
what the whole the whole buying journey how can we take that from the from from the using take it back learn how their buying journey was way before go to the very first time they got that need that what they had wasn't really working what did they do who they who did they ask where did they look and that's where i think it ties into uh andre what you what you posted about yesterday the the idea of the dark funnel right so we we get we get to uncover uh, all that information for me you know the most um let's say one of of the worst ways to run marketing is to do a guess working so a company says okay let's I have seen this wonderful webinar about, let's say, LinkedIn marketing or Twitter marketing or YouTube, you know, or Instagram. So let's launch, you know, Instagram program. So let's do some Instagram marketing. But, but what's the goal if your customers are not hanging there? Or somebody, you know, there are lots of conversations nowadays on LinkedIn about different marketing programs. And somebody could get a buy-in. Let's launch the community or let's launch the newsletter. Or let's launch the podcast or whatever. But the question is, is this the way how your customers are consuming the information, you know? Or maybe it makes more sense to elaborate with them, engage with them on some of the existing channels and you need to identify these channels. And the only one way to do this is talking to the customers. And one practical question I would like to ask you. So when we are talking about the customer interviews, so do we mean the phone conversations, the surveys, or uh, what's the format of customer interviews you are recommending? Okay, great question. So as I mentioned before, the, the binging on, on data insight, that's, that's, not, uh, that's not what it is. And it's not an informal conversation either. It's not a, um, I, I sometimes um, get uh, founders telling me, yes, we're very much in touch with our customers. We call them uh, on the phone. I have five to six calls um, every week, but that's not enough. That's an informal, just checking in, that's relationship building. That's great. But this is a, of course, it's a conversation, but it's a much more structured uh, conversation. So you have a list of questions that will drive you, that would lead them to give you the information that, that you need. Okay, so it's a pretty structured that we'll go through that uh, today in detail. But the idea, Andre, is, and for everyone else, is, okay, so if we want to understand why do people buy, why did people buy from us, why not just ask them, right? And then, you know, the session would be on, on another topic, right? We wouldn't need for, we wouldn't have a need um, for, for this. It's because, you know, if we ask them, so if I ask you, why did you buy that last purchase? You're, you're going to give me a rationalized answer, right? And you, so you probably don't even know the real answer. And if you did, you wouldn't even know how to, to explain it uh, to me. So basically it just goes to say that it's, that information would be uh, useless. Yeah. So, which is why we have to go through another route, ask a series of questions to, to get that information out of them. And, um, you know, lots of companies that buy in the idea of customer interviews don't know how to start. And the most common objections are, well, why our customers should devote, you know, their time and share all this information with us? How do you overcome this objection and how to get the clients on the call? Okay, so there, there are two points, great question, two points there. Um, one is that the internal team is actually actually believes that this is helpful. So they maybe in your example, they're not 100% convinced that this is helpful um, because those that are, you know, just ask different questions that say, okay, so what do I do? I need to do next. No, um, they they don't try to to put uh, roadblocks. No, and so how do you how do you get them uh, on uh, to to give you time? First of all, in general, you, you have to be respectful of their time, which is you can, you can give them rewards. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go to the typical, um, you know, gift card, $20 gift card, et cetera. No, have a thought, like, how does it apply to your business, your target? Uh, you, you know your target better than anyone else. 
you know your clients better than anyone else, what would they value? Ask yourself that question, right? And take it, take it from there. A simple example, if it's a um, subscription, for example, an app subscription uh, that costs 10 bucks a month, ask yourself the question, would two months free be a wow for them, right? A no brainer, they would click on that link and be like, yes, I want, uh, I'll give you my time for sure. So that's, those are the type of questions. There isn't a, a universal gift that you can give everyone. It's just that generally be respectful of, uh, of, of people's time whenever, whether it's customer interviews or not, uh, you know, give something in, in return uh, or show, show respect. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. So um, this one of the ideas that companies can use, they can incentivize, you know, their customers to uh, have to jump in the calls and share all these insights. Aside from this, uh, what we have seen that uh, works with our customers uh, as well is, um, so you gave, you shared an example about low ticket, let's say SaaS company that have, uh, that has a huge customer database, thousands of customers or thousands of users. Uh, in our case, we serve a different vertical. So we serve uh, B2B companies with long sales cycles and high ACV, and they don't have that huge database. And in this case, we recommend uh, the first person of the company, let's say CEO to record a video where this person explains why they want to host this interview, why they need these insights. And it, they finish it, you know, with, uh, let's say, light call to action. So I would be very grateful if you'll dedicate 15 minutes or 20 minutes of your time to have a call, let's say, with Andre, who is our client success manager and share these practical insights. And then they do, let's say, they send an email, include this personalized video. And this the this uh, makes sense to their clients. So they see that this company is really serious about this. If executive, you know, if... Uh, one of the key persons from the company recorded the video then and asked, you know, made this personal ask, then, then it also makes sense to them. Um, let's, uh, let's discuss the practical aspects of running the customer interviews. I know that uh, guys came to get these practical worksheets. Um, so let's say we have booked our first customer interviews uh let's nail the process so how do you structure the call what questions we should ask you can share your screen and we can yeah. uh, we can work with your worksheets absolutely and and i just while i do that um i just wanted to add with the, you know you, that the, the example that you gave was great um of course if it's the intern just to give you a you know on the other side of the the spectrum if it's the intern asking for the interviews then you won't get much uh buy-in in in terms of no so great example okay so once you've sent uh you've set up the the emails uh you've set set up you know if you're using calendly or whatever you're you're using connected it to zoom for example let me just share this. How do you actually, so there's, this is a, a worksheet which you'll, you'll be getting. So no need to, uh, no need to take uh, notes, right? And today we'll be sending, we'll be sending yeah. this. Yeah. Okay. So it, it pretty much walks you through uh, the, the whole thing and it tells you what each question is for basically uh, generally. Okay. So uh, the the very the very beginning of a of a of a conversation first of all is to remember that it's a conversation it's not a set of questions it's not an F FBI interrogation okay which is why we you know we recommend doing mock interviews practicing so that you could be um, you can make the other person feel comfortable okay so it's a it's about asking questions and then asking follow-up questions like tell me more etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, this seems it seems like you were really bummed out about this how did it make you feel what was that and then you start taking information of course you're recording all this so unless there are big ideas there's no need to jot down you know all sorts of uh, uh all sorts of notes you, you'll you can revisit it but just 
pick out the, the most important ones. Now, when, when you start, of course, you thank them for your time. This is, I mean, you can start any way you like, but this is, um, yeah, feel free to start this way. Uh, you can remind them that there's no, no, no sale. This is especially if, if you are interviewing um, customers of your product or service alternatives also. So you wanna really remind them that there's no, you're not selling here. Okay, because this is a reminder to everyone. Um, maybe you have done this or um, you have thought of this. It's a great source of information. If you yeah, make a list of all the alternatives to your product and service and go interview people that have purchased those, uh, not because you want to make them switch, but just because you want to learn, it, it's also, it also adds to, to, your, to your knowledge base. Okay, so when you, when you first start here, whoops. There you go. There's a little bit of small talk. Of course, you don't go right in. Small talk, you can say, you know, uh, I'll spot, Andre, I'll spot, you know, I can't really see now because it's, uh, I don't have you in full screen, but I might spot the name of a book uh, behind you, start the conversation, make some, make some small talk, okay? And then you, you uh, ask for permission to record. This is super important. Um, I just usually say, you know, I'd like to be 100% focused on the conversation and not bother you with the typing. Is it okay if uh, I record this? You can even make a couple of jokes about, you know, uh, I promise this won't end up, you know, on, on the news tonight. But then again, you know, uh, that's, that's up to you. And then you just, you just, you go right in. So no need to say, okay, so let's start. No, you just go right in and, and start asking the questions. Now, if, if anyone has any questions, because I cannot see the chat, uh, Andre, just let me know. So um, how does your product or service fit into uh, the work you do? What does it do for you? So you start to understand in their own words, their goals, okay? And when you decided to buy this product or service, was there a specific problem you were trying to solve or job you were trying to get done? Okay, this uh, is this one's. Mm -hmm. Sorry for interrupting you. Um, I would like uh, to emphasize one more question here. So mm -hmm. let's, uh, when we focus on this question, so we have the what, so we can identify the goals, but let's uh, use the why as well. So where we can use this information so what uh, let's say for me the goals are clear so when we know the goals we can improve our pitch our ads our outreach message and our landing page copy so we can say okay this is what our product can help you to achieve yeah absolutely um when you're uh, again we all we all know that um our, our prospects are probably you know, unless they're doing nothing about about their their problem, unless they're doing absolutely nothing, uh, they're probably already doing something. They're doing the best they can. You know, which is why I'm sure you've read in other places we are not their saviors, right? We're just here to offer them a better way to 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 get uh, what they they want to achieve, right? So absolutely, where does this where does this go? Um, landing page. Uh, this. This is not directly, you don't, I'm not trying to say that the answer to this, you just copy paste it, but this is ammunition, right? I just want to make sure <laughs> for this everyone. Is this is, yeah, this is ammunition for even your cold emails, your, um, uh, your landing page, your ads, um, your posts. No, this is, this is all ammunition for, for all of your, your marketing basically the type of content you're going to you're going to put out like all this that you're going to see today absolutely and there is okay. one more question that is mm -hmm. coming from Pravin. so he asks uh does uh this uh model so does this uh customer interview process works uh only for existing customers or it can be used with potential clients as well At this this whole thing is for your current customers um, and I'll show you, I'll show you why, because you're trying to understand here, let me, um, maybe this will, will help. Uh, yep. There we go. Okay. So if we're trying to understand the whole buying journey, right. Um, 
this is where the purchase happens. We're trying to, to understand way back when, when the first trigger happened, when they, they thought, okay, maybe what I have is not you know, working anymore, right? Uh, so just really quickly to take you through this, um, after that, there's a, a passive uh, looking phase where I just, you know, maybe ask a couple friends, but it's very informal. Um, the level of urgency from left to right, um, it, at, at the left, it's, it's much lower, right? Uh, as their level of um, discomfort uh, rises, there's more urgency to actually find a solution, right? So then something else, else happened um, that made them think enough this needs to be solved. Maybe they messed up again. Um, and then they start to actively look. And that means actually investing time in looking for a solution. They're taking it more seriously. Then something else happens um, that just takes them overboard. That says, OK, this is it. If uh, it's not going to be looking good, OK? Which then takes them to the deciding phase. They already know. They have a few options. Um, they understand how they're going to uh, decide on, on, on which they're going to decide, and then they decide to commit. What happens with marketing is that most marketing happens here in the deciding phase, right? We, we don't dig deeper. And why is that a problem? Because, and especially in, in, in B2B, and Andre, you can, you can chime in here, is that most, most decisions, if, if you're going, um, people that are that are actually ready to buy um, most of their decisions are already made they already know who they're going to go with so you might just end up being a column father okay and many companies need three options for example to to present but they already know which which one they they are going with so if their decision has already been made right um that's that's not helping you at all so how yeah, can you get in front of them? Yeah, no, go, ahead, go ahead. But what I love about this question is that the answer to this question provides you uh, the, let's say, intent triggers or sales triggers for your sales team. So you know uh, what you should be looking at to identify the accounts that started the research process. So you know these triggers, and if you somehow can track these triggers, you can reach out at the right time. So you'll be the first vendor, you know. Uh, again, it's not about pitching them at this stage, mm -hmm. but it's mostly about connecting, establishing the relationship with the buying committee, you know. And this is how you, what we used to call, penetrate into account. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and it depends on on each uh, it depends on each account. Um, uh, to me, part of um, an ideal uh, client of mine, uh, it has recently been funded, and it's their first funding round. So this is this is a start, right? That as you say, um, can can you know make me stop guessing, and actually be make uh, actually um, ask myself um, proactive questions. Meaning, so where do I find these? Maybe Crunchbase is, uh, no? Is there an automation I can put in place, no? So that's, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's ammunition so that um, we can all stop guessing and then stop having that feeling of whenever something, you know, we always feel like we're making stuff up or whenever something actually works, um, we feel like we either dodged a bullet or phew, that was close. No, so yeah. Does th does that answer your yeah absolutely. your question? Yeah, the question because uh, this is why we need to. These are the customers that that can provide us this information. The prospects with prospects, we can understand what they're currently doing. Yes, which is really important. Which is what are they what are they using? What do they like about it? What do they dislike about it? What what else did they try before? Before that, so you can run um, user interviews for sure. And that gives you a lot of learning because again, if to be able to connect with prospects, if you go in um, and, and I might, um, I might be, um, bring me back Andre if I go too far, but 
you know, the, the typical example of the statement of I help X do Y, right, which is 100% about us and not about them, right? What's, what's better? There's so many examples out there, no? Um, there's, there are examples of asking that question, do you know when, no? Do you know when you have to do your uh, end of month report and your sales team has to stay um, seven extra hours, blah, 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 right? And your prospect says, yes, I know exactly that. So you've connected with them as opposed to, hi, I help X do Y, right? So in, in all this, to, to when you understand what they're actually, um, what they, they're working with, so th these alternatives, what they're working with, what sucks, no? What actually sucks? What are the consequences of not changing and not doing anything uh, differently? It, it helps you structure a message that first A, um, grabs more attention and, and B, be more relevant um, and not spammy. And I love how you have structured these questions um, for guys that are listening to the audio recording of this session, I highly recommend you to check the YouTube video so you can see these worksheets. Uh, and um, I love the question that you are asking here. So how did you go about finding the right solution? So try to give me as much detail as you can. This is exactly how you can identify the buying process. I believe, you know, for me, the uh, I mentioned this already, it's the most silliest way to run marketing campaigns saying, hey, let's launch LinkedIn ads or whatever. So you need to understand how your customers are buying. And uh, you can find lots of researches, lots of articles that prove that, especially in a complex B2B, lots of buyers, they don't have this linear prior buying process, you know, so they can, they can hear about your company, then they can um, log in to their favorite community and ask the question there. They can attend a virtual event like we are hosting right now, the podcast session, and they can ask a question in the chat like Previn did. So they can ask a question, guys, for example, what software would you recommend to run the customer interviews? Just, just to give you an idea. And this is how the decisions, uh, I don't say that decisions uh, will be done by these companies, but at least they can get the information that can influence their decision-making process. And this call can help exactly with identifying these channels. Um, what are other channels that we can use to identify, let's say, the dark funnels and the customer uh, decision-making process? Yeah, uh, Andre, I just realized that when I switched to talk about the buying journey, I wasn't sharing, I thought I was sharing the screen, but um, let, me, let me just, <laughs> let me just share it for uh, Pravin. This is what I was referring to. And I just realized that you were not, uh, you were not seeing this. So uh, Andre, if I could just take um, 30 seconds. Yeah, to just, Yeah, so this is, this is what I was uh, referring to. So the, the buying journey. Uh, there's there's a first trigger, as I mentioned, you know, in another one, another one, and then they finally they purchase and then they start using it. Um, you know, if we talk about using it, that's also another um, uh, positive. It's an advantage of, of doing the customer interviews because you understand what their expectations were before. And as we all know, uh, when you understand someone's expectations, it's better to either meet them or not feel so bad about them. Right. Um, so yeah, so it's about going back and understanding all this, which you know you get if you interview customers. You also get if you interview uh, customers of your alternatives also to understand that. And as Andre was saying, so maybe in in this phase, what did they do? What where did they look? Did they ask a friend? Did they go send a message to an influencer? What did they do? And that's that's where the gold. Um, you know, we talk about go to market a lot. Uh, we read a lot about go to market, but our, the information is mostly here. Okay. Thanks for that. That's brilliant. Um, that's brilliant. Thanks a lot for explaining this. Um, let's, let's elaborate on this. So what are the questions we can ask to understand <laughs> better the buying journey, the buying process? Yeah. 
Yeah. So in terms of um, um, let's let's go won't get into each and every one of them um, unless we have time. But to understand, for example, the um, this uh, what they were using before and what sucks about it. This, this is a really important one, especially it's going to help you um, communicate better in a more relevant way to your prospects. OK, this is this is the goal, as uh, the example I gave earlier. Um, so. This one, if you take them back to the last time it happens, you take them back to the moment and then have them and go back from there, you, you get all the, you understand not only what triggered them to actually start solving, no? So, okay, so there's something that, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable with this. Um, maybe it's the last time uh, an intern messed up something. Um, and you said, okay, it's enough. I, I need to get this structured, right? So you need to know that. Why is it important? Because first of all, that's how you're gonna connect with the new ones, right? If you know what triggers them, you might, uh, Andre, as you said before, is it a trigger that you can actually find, right? And, and be there at the moment uh, it happens or can you, can you see it coming? Is it a trigger that you can see coming and, and also um, start being there before? It happens, right? Some triggers um, uh, are, some triggers aren't. And, and, and in your messaging, so how to, how to connect. If it's after the trigger, then you know it's, um, you can almost use the exact words here. Okay, so um, this one's really important in terms of the whole buying journey, what, what channels, how did you go, uh, go about finding the right solutions? What, where did they look? What options, like literally where they look, I mean, with, in detail. Um, and you can use follow-up questions like, yes, tell me more, and tell me more about this to get more information out of them. What did they consider? What options did they consider? And what we wanna know is, as you can see here, is if they have five options, why did they end up choosing you? That's really important. It's why did they end up choosing you? And what was wrong with the other four options? You also want to know that, not just because they chose you that you're happy with that, right? Why did they choose you? And why did they not choose the other four? Yeah, does that great. make sense? Hmm. Absolutely. And there is one more question uh, from Zoran. He asks, um, so he's interested to understand better the decision-making criteria and people who influence the decision-making process. So what questions we can ask to identify this? Yeah, so the, the next one is uh, an, another, another it's, a, it's a good question. So this one identifies influence. So where would you typically go um, or who do you trust when you're looking for info about your product type? Right. So what what does that what does that give you? It won't give you a list, but you're running several interviews and you'll get a you'll get a list. But maybe you identify an influencer or a micro influencer or someone that's running, you know, uh, maybe it's it's Andre, right? From Full Funnel, right? So I always I always uh, check in with Andre to to see, you know. If he knows about this tool, he doesn't know about this tool, what does he recommend, uh, et cetera, then I'm, I'm going to have a conversation with Andre. I'm going to do my best to have a conversation with Andre, right? Because as, as I showed you the buying journey before, if most marketers are focused in the decision stage, the idea here is how can you get in front of them before? Right? So I, if I know that you know, they, they look up to Andre, right? I'm going to see if I can maybe partner with Andre and get in front of them way earlier before they actually made a decision on the four or five uh, choices to make sure, first of all, to, to make sure I'm on that list, but to make sure I'm maybe I'm the only one on that list. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Hmm. Uh, I would uh, drop my five cents here as well. So, um, what we have seen, uh, if you'd like to define the buying committee and the in-house evaluation process, the questions we are asking for this, uh, the first one is, uh, can you remember 
who uh, was involved in the research process or vendor evaluation process. Uh, can you name the colleagues or the job roles that were involved? Uh, next, uh, when you uh, had an in-house discussion about our proposal, about our solution, who was, uh, you know, who was uh, making decisions and who was providing a feedback on this proposal from your team. So these are the most, like these are great questions to identify the buying committee structure so we can understand the roles. Next, we are going to follow up with several questions like what were the questions that these people, you know, uh, asked on this meeting? Um, what were the opinions they shared? So how did they perceive our offer? Of course, you can play with these questions. Uh, it's just an idea how you can structure it. And then, so finally you decided, so you chose our proposal. So what exactly influenced your decision-making process? So what, uh, what specific feature or anything, anything specific in our proposal made sense to you so you decided to choose our product so these are the questions uh, we used to ask um, let me know if uh, it answers your question zoran uh, and dina if, if if you have something to add feel free please yeah that's that, that's great thank thanks for for chiming in there andre um yeah i can't see the chat so please do let me know if um if, if we haven't answered the question, yeah. there's also, this is, you know, of course, uh, B2B, but when it comes to, you know, B2B with, um, with a, 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 you know, a more, I guess, more complex buying committee, um, but you can have tools like Shield, for example, uh, where, you know, for personal branding, so, so uh, LinkedIn analytics, that's one person, but who did you have to run it through someone? Did you have to run it through someone? Maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe with, with that type of tool, maybe you're, you're working in a team, you have someone in your value matrix and you have to check in with them to see if, uh, if that's, that'll be useful or not, right? Uh, a B2C example, um, I think the, the, the Buyer Institute uses this example a lot is, I have to check in with my wife, right? So, these are, you know, just the same as, you know, a decision criteria, for example, it's easy to use. What does that mean, right? Um, so, yeah. I suggest to focus right now on the learnings from these customer interviews because we can play with questions. Guys, if you'll have any questions, uh, that would <laughs> sound ridiculous, but if you'll have any questions about the questions that should be asked on the customer interview, feel free to post your question in the chat. Again, the third time I use the word question. Uh, but what I suggest to focus on right now is how to store these insights so all the teams can leverage them. And finally, how to make the customer interview process as a part of your marketing operations. So let's focus. I know you have this learning worksheet. So let's mm -hmm. focus on the best ways to store this information and share across the teams. Awesome. Um, before that, I just want to um, just want to show them one question, which is if you have time to ask or not. Um, there, yeah. What surprised you in a positive sense uh, about what our product is able to do for you that you didn't know before buying. So what does this do? It, it makes sure that you're not leaving any value unshown because if it's something of valuable, uh, of value, sorry, uh, then maybe you should ask yourself the question, should this be brought uh, before? No, because it'll, it'll speed up the decision process. It will speed up the buying process. No, the, these types of things. Okay, in terms That's of brilliant. objections, yeah, in terms of, of, of objections, anything you felt anxious about before hitting pay, right? So these are all maybe internal objections that people don't actually get to voice um, if it weren't for the interviews. Okay, so in terms of organizing your workflow, so all this you recorded, of course, um, I recommend you transcribe it. 
uh, absolutely take you know half an hour, uh, 40 minutes after each interview. And while the information is fresh, you've got your notes with the, the main points, you know, the alternatives, the pains. These are the, the main uh, points that, that, you, that you've picked out. What software do you recommend for this? For, for transcribing? Yeah. Transcribing um, the script. I've used the script before, even though the script offers many, you know, it's much more complex. You can edit and, and do all that, but I've used, um, tr uh, tr for, I've used it for transcriptions. I've used, and it's a, it's a paid, uh, it's a paid one. You've got author also. I've also used uh, YouTube, <laughs> you know, uh, in, in, at the very beginning, I would just use YouTube. Of course, it's not as instant, but you just upload them, wait, and it, you know, the automatic su uh, subtitles, um, they get generated and you can download them. Hmm. Okay, so you transcribe all that and then there's a worksheet here. Um, so this worksheet would help you organize your, your findings. Okay, this doesn't mean that out of this, your whole marketing is fixed and you've got, you know, a, a nice, uh, uh, your, your strategy is set and all that, but it's just a way to start organizing your findings because think about a, a half an hour interview or 45 minutes interview, those are a lot of words. So you've got to do that, you know, go through the first exercise of spotting the most important. Okay, there's some fluff, um, but you need to spot the most important. Now I've used this worksheet quite a few times and it is, um, inspired by uh, Louis Grenier from uh, Everyone Hates Marketers. Yeah, you all, you, all know, you all know him. So the idea here is to use, always use their words. So whenever you're gonna clip, you're gonna clip snippets with their words. Okay, that is very, very, very important. I don't need to, 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 to tell you how important it is um, to, to be able to connect with your future customers. Um, the, the idea of the copy that you're gonna actually use, okay? So always use their words. Okay, so on the left, you'll pretty much see uh, this reorganized. Yes, what you see here, reorganized. So what they were using before and what sucks about it, okay? So you've got customer one, customer two, customer three, um, and you start inserting snippets triggers, insert snippets, okay? So here the example is when I suffer from imposter syndrome and need more confidence, that's, that's one of the triggers, okay? Um, the pains, have a few ideas, but a lot of concerns to be honest. This is uh, something that has been, um, uh, that actually told me, uh, someone, someone told me in, in my in recent interviews when I was interviewing marketers and founders that have hired uh, my alternatives. So no selling, I promise no selling. I just wanted to, to actually learn. We have a lack of confidence. We have saturated market, sick of bureaucracy. You get the, no, you're gonna get different. You're gonna get different answers and then you'll start seeing the light. Now you're gonna start seeing overlaps. Outcomes, gains, always in their own words, gain clarity here, finding a profitable niche. Um, the alternatives, the uniqueness, the influence, the buying committee that we talked about before, who was involved, uh, the objections. So is there anything that they were anxious about before actually, actually buying or when they were considering the solution? What channels uh, did, they, did they look in? Um, their your ideal target because you you there's a question here which is very important which is if i were to find um yeah so my goal is to find more cost, more amazing customers like you where would i go to find them right so that's that you also get that information like whenever you connect to someone um if andre for example he helped me out with something um you know, I can always say, um, Andre, how can I find more people like you? How can I connect to more people like you? And we tend to forget that. So someone that has is bought into something or 
even it doesn't have to be a customer. Even if you're doing a warm connect uh, with someone, you did an interview, ask them, where can I find more people like you? Okay. Um, what type of people would most benefit from product or service? That's also something that I ask for my own business every single year in my yearly survey. Okay, so because I want to make sure that my ideal client is on point. Okay, even the people that have worked with me, if they, they start, you know, saying community manager, then I know something's wrong. Right, so that's, that's how you stay on point. How would you describe product or service to a friend or colleague? That's, you know, that's a, that's a given that goes straight to the actual, the actual words. Um, cliches. You know what is yeah. great about the previous question I wanted to say? So uh, when you ask, um, when you ask it like this, um, so what type of people would uh, benefit more from this, yeah. uh, let's say product, you can identify the insights for your use cases. Quite often you visit, you know, the website, SaaS companies, they have, so let's say vertical cases, and then they have job role cases. They say for marketing teams, for sales teams, whatever, depending mm -hmm. on their vertical. But uh, quite often these use cases are made just you know just because the team brainstormed who are let's say the end users of our product and they created this copy so they created this landing page but the truth is that you can ask this question and then you can realize you know your target person your content can reply contact can reply well you know our hr is a power user of this product and you have never thought about this so you know the buying committee you know the decision maker you know let's say the team on the surface that is using your product but you never let's say you didn't dive deeply into the uh, buying committee structure and you don't know the end users and this is how you can identify them because they are hidden influencers and the truth is if you are selling you know if you are selling high ticket products every year you'll have a contract renewal process which is a mm -hmm. standalone campaign by its own you know the contract ends then your client needs to pay again six figures seven figures who knows and they again they evaluate the ROI of the product does it make sense to you know to renew the contract and pay for this and uh, what's interesting here in this case they will have a new in-house discussion and they will definitely involve the power users but if you have no idea who are the power users you know they can come and say well like I don't think it makes sense to use the software. They have, you know, they were created at the beginning when they were selling to us, they provided support and boarding, et cetera. But then, you know, they became lazy. They don't reply to our emails or whatever. They didn't uh, develop the features they promised, et cetera. And just to give you an idea, of course, this is the worst case, but you got the idea. Or they can say, yes, I love this, but I'm not sure if it's worth its money. Maybe I was just evaluating some other, you know, alternatives. And in this case, if you dive deep, if you identify these people, you know, you can connect if you have a client success manager. That's the goal for that person to connect with the end users, you know, and ask their opinions. Maybe not running the same in-depth interview but you can ask several questions what's uh, how do you like it is it valuable does it help you with you know uh, improving your workflows whatever achieving your uh, results or the goals that you want to achieve with our software so this is like this is so powerful so i believe i believe the insights you'll get are, are brilliant yeah, and especially when it comes to features. So features, this this whole uh, this whole customer interview process. Um, one thing we haven't talked about is features, right? So when it comes, I know that um, when I was in working at startups, this idea of roadmap you now would work hand in hand with um, with the the head of development, and of course, I wanted new things all the time. No, of course, you're always thinking, you know, you're, you're always thinking what I have is not enough, right? So, and you're always thinking, okay, so two 
uh, customers mentioned they wanted this. So that's, that's where it's gonna go in the roadmap. And that's totally flawed, right? First of all, it's not statistically relevant. And two, did, you, did, did that suggestion from the customer come from you know, a leading question maybe? Okay, so it also helps you, you know, really just focus on what's important and what's not important. Working on the features that you know that, that will actually move the needle, so to speak. Yeah. So you suggest to store all these answers using the, you know, transcribe the conversation, use the snippets from your conversation and store everything in this learning worksheet and share it across the teams, correct? I mean, you have, yeah, every single, um, after every single interview, if you could do this while it's fresh, yeah, extract. Um, and then you can either have a weekly update. This shouldn't take more than two to three weeks, the interview uh, process, right? It shouldn't. Um, but out each week, have a, have a meeting with the team, share the insights, talk about, you know, the overlaps, right? Because, Again, people are going to start saying the same thing again and again, and that's where when the magic happens, yeah. right? And that's you know if you hear the same thing um, again and again from you know seven to ten people, five to seven people, people that don't know each other, then you can stop. Uh, you're not learning anything more. That's absolutely true. And I would like to finish uh, you know our conversation with a practical question. So how to make customer interviews a part of your marketing operations so it becomes an evergreen process I, I would suggest first of all have before it becomes part of your process to actually have the the buy-in enough buy-in to actually be done the first time right so you you extract all that the first time and you i think it's once you do all this, and, and this is not a this is not a piece of cake. Okay, it takes it takes work, which is why the rewards are much higher, right? Uh, surveys, uh, sure, they're quick, but they don't give you this in-depth um, yeah, information that will actually uh, move, move the needle for your for your marketing. So when once you actually run this, and the teams, you know, gets the aha moment, which is, wow, no. This is this is pretty neat. So out of all this, first of all, there is the, the first step of the knowing. You no, know? um, I get founders super excited about just just knowing. You no, know? uh, just hearing from customers in their own words um, and and being able to make you know certain changes right away and seeing results. Right? Maybe they're getting ahead of themselves, but you know that's fine. To each you know they get excited and and that's great. So that's show that that it actually works inside the company. And then how to do it, um, I think the best way is to, to, to market in your calendar, just as certain founders and marketers speak to customers, have conversations with their customers um, five to, to 10 a week, just to keep the pulse on the, on, the, on the market. This could also be part of it. So to have you know, five, five interviews every week, just on an ongoing basis or five every two weeks on an ongoing basis. Uh, and then Andre, there's, there's a thing that we haven't uh, mentioned, which is, it's gonna be in the document, but who do we wanna talk to? We wanna talk to those that have recently purchased. Why? Because if we're asking them to go back to, to, to when they actually had that, you know, that, that pain, they, that discomfort, if we talk to someone that bought a year ago, that information won't be as fresh. So it won't be uh, useful. So if you can talk to those that have recently uh, purchased, it could be up to two months, uh, three months, but you know, the more recent, uh, the better. Then each company has its different, different levels. You have the high power users, you have the churned users, you have, no, we can, and then we can start, you know, making this as complex as we want to, right? Um, and from your point of view, if a company doesn't have a client success manager, who will, should be in charge of running these customer interviews? First thing that I would say is marketing. Absolutely marketing. Yeah, this knowledge has to be 
has to be uh, a part of uh, a part of marketing shared with everything else for sure shared with sales because it builds up on the knowledge they also get from sales um, sales does won't have the chance to get this this data and this is important for them too um, sales has a, what you uh, you call the familiarity bias okay so they're so much in content uh, contact with their customers that their cons customers don't provide that much color because they just assume that they you know the salesperson already knows so they leave out certain things that might seem obvious right um in, in marketing since they're not in constant contact they can um they can get them to the level where they share uh, more more color so that information uh, for for sales is important but absolutely marketing and uh one of the last questions I see in the chat, Kraven is asking, what should be the sample size for these interviews to make the outcome useful? Yeah, so this is a bit different than, uh, than, than the surveys to make it st statistically relevant, right? Um, here's when you stop learning. Okay, it's when, when you stop learning uh, any, anything new or you have you know, people telling you the same thing again and again. Um, that means that it's probably true. Everyone goes and asks Andre for, you know, uh, for recommendation on tools, for example, right? That does that does that answer your question? Uh, we can yes. run anywhere from twenty. You can you can start running anywhere from you know, uh, in the first ten, you'll start learning things new yourself. Okay, I would say that. Um, I always recommend to, uh, first of all, to um, divide all your customers into different segments. And then uh, as a rule of thumb, that's, that's my general recommendation. You need to, to uh, you need to aim to have at least 10 conversations with the best clients. I mean, the best clients by the mm -hmm. revenue they generated for your company from every given segment that you are prospecting so if if you can structure it that way that would that should be your goal and then you'll have enough insights and um, the reason for this is you know all customers were not created equal unfortunately mm -hmm. so uh at, i'd i'd uh, rather recommend to start interviewing your best customers customers that generate the most of revenue so your goal is to collect the insights from them and use them in your marketing campaign so you can generate more clients like these ones if you have again but uh, this is more applicable to companies with high ticket sales if you have it let's say a low ticket SaaS product and uh, you know you have a huge customer database then you can just randomly select 10 to 15 customers and interview them so hope it makes sense uh, and uh, let me ask you a question uh, how was this session for you guys uh, provide us some feedback and meanwhile i i would like to thank you zina for sharing all these insights with us sharing this worksheet uh, you guys if you are watching the recording you'll be able to uh, access the files, the worksheets uh, by the links that are in the podcast description as well uh, for those guys that sign up for the session, I will send all the links in the email with the uh, session recording. So uh, thanks a lot for sharing your insights. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Zoran. Thank you, Previn. Thanks a lot, guys, for uh, providing your feedback. I'm so happy that it was valuable and actionable and see you guys in the next episodes cheers thank you guys thank you